Here we go, life update with Joey from Emotion Engineering. Last time we were here, we shot our Pikes Peak special. Yep. yep. Which was a lot of fun. It was a three-part series that we did with our friends from Pennzoil. Correct, yeah. But this time I wanted to do kind of an update on what you guys are doing here because just this past weekend, we did a meet with Avance Magazine. We invited a lot of people over for our open house. First time ever you've ever had an open house here. <laughs> yeah. And a couple hundred people showed up. It was pretty busy. I wanted to film this around that time, but of course, everybody was just so busy. So I was able to check out a lot of the cars there, but uh, I didn't have a chance to talk to you about what you're doing. Uh, pretty recently. So yeah, it's like we need a we need an update pretty regularly because we're always switching it up. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we're gonna do a full feature on this Turbo Safari build. Um, so you guys can check that out. And we also did a full feature on Project Nasty, which is a project that you've really been known for um, in the Porsche world. Um, but I just wanted to talk about some of the other projects that you have going on. Yeah, yeah, you know? of course. Um, as we we took a pause on the, the Cayenne stuff um, during Pikes Peak and building the Turbo GT3R, which as you mentioned, we featured. But we're constantly, uh, we're back to them and we're constantly updating. Um, this one, this is mine. This is the shop Cayenne, but you know, we use it occasionally to update. Like in this case, the, the bumpers we're redoing. We've redone the rear bumpers, but we haven't made a fixture yet. So we just put it up on the car, up on the rack and we build a new one on, on my car. But uh, we're doing those again. Pretty cool that you're doing this with Cayennes. Yeah, yeah, and mostly, I mean, we've done mostly Cayenne diesels just because it really started with, I, th I think, you know, a sports car manufacturer making an SUV is cool, but making a diesel SUV is even cooler, you know, and when you think Paris Dakar um, and, the, and the trucks and SUVs running, they're typically diesel. So we were inspired by that when starting these. You know, they're extremely capable. Um, not a ton of people in the past have used them for, um, for off-roading or overlanding, um, but we, we definitely do. I've, this is my second one. You did the feature on the, on the first one, and we've come quite a ways, but still, it's, it's, you, you just put protection and, and in some cases, suspension, and, uh, and that's all you need. The, everything else is, is good enough. The, the all-wheel drive setup on these is phenomenal. It has the air suspension on this one, this is the first air suspension um, Cayenne diesel that we've had, that we've done. And we just, uh, we used um, our spacers and then tricked the sensors. We didn't really get it higher. We just got a little more droop travel, you know, at, a, at higher settings. So uh, it's really nice. It's nice to tow with the air too. Here's taking a look at the front, front bumper that we just recently redesigned as well just to make it a little more uh, simplified to build. They're all still built in house, um, each and every one of them, but we made it a little easier, a little cleaner. Um, have the full engine and transmission skid plate here in the back. You have the full um, differential skid plate, you know, that also protects the, the, um, the subframes because we've had a customer that really likes to use his car, smash up his, his subframes where the adjustments are so that became a problem. So we made a skid plate to protect that part. So even though this generation doesn't have a transfer case, because the first generation of the Cayenne had it, these are, you, do you think these are better for overlanding? I can't say better, but when people are like, people think um, big tires for the track are necessary. That was the case. I mean, yes, we still do, bigger is better, but to a point, there's, the old cars had big tires because they had bad, poor damper technology. Now you can have really great damper technology and you don't need a wide tire. You needed transfer cases back in the day. This, I would say, you know, it's not a rock crawler. Let's clarify that. You know, people are trying to, you know, talk about them as rock crawlers, but although I have rock crawled with this, you know, you really, it's not what it's designed for and that's not what our goal is. But this can go anywhere that my brother can go in his Tacoma that has uh, 33s and long travel suspension. My sister's Rubicon that's on 35s. You know, they're both fully built and they can't really go anywhere that I can't. You know, in some ways there's, um, 
the, the fact that this has so much low RPM torque is fantastic. Um, the fact that the wheelbase is short is also fantastic. There's no rear you know, solid axle, so it, it's not quite as high as some, but my ground clearance is the same. You know, so it, it's fantastic. But the, the E-diffs on this, it's like, it's like saying a 991 GT3 isn't good on track because it doesn't have a mechanical diff. You know, like they, Porsche knows what they're doing when tuning the electronics or, you know, especially, well, in all forms, but definitely around chassis related things because mm -hmm. they are intended to be performance vehicles. This was just dropped off to us. It flew over from Europe. Um, it was purchased by a client that's gonna race in South America. This is a 991 GT2 RS Club Sport Evo. So you've seen these running at Pikes Peak, you know, under, uh, I mean, even uh, David, Donahue runs one, and uh, I can't even remember all the names of people that have run the GT2s, but this is the Evo, so it's got improved um, aerodynamics on this car, among a few other things, wider wheels. But uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool car <coughs> with this vented front fender at the door as well as on the top of the fender, bigger splitter, uh, revised hood. <laughs> the crazy thing to me about this car is it was built just like the 935, which is essentially the same car, right? right? Uh, without a racing series in mind. Exactly, which was kind of shocking, you know? And then I think they did start to put some series over in Europe where you could, you know, you could run a, a GT2 RS Club Sport and a 935, you know, over there, but really there's nothing to, to do with them. You have to kind of put them in, um, in, in certain categories, but it's, it's a neat car because it's, you know, it's built on a, um, on a streetcar transmission and a streetcar engine, which is plenty stout, but it takes a bit of the service interval uh, out of the equation. It's just so crazy because this was never meant to be a streetcar, even no. though it has a lot of streetcar components. No, no, exactly. Well, it's it, it streetcar, just like a cup car, you know, it starts as a streetcar and there's race car components. This is the same thing. It's streetcar chassis, race car components, race car bodywork, race car electronics. You can see all the tech stickers uh, yeah. from, from where it's raced. So this is a, a GT2 European series. I'm assuming that it, like this was created for cars like this. Yeah. So you got Red Bull Ring, Mizano, Spa, uh, Paul Ricard, Monza. <laughs> Every time I look at this, you see the OEM feeling from this, even though it's a race car. It's just so neat. It's, it's so clean. The fit and finish is so tidy. I mean, you know? look at this. Where, where do you ever see anything like this? That's side impact stuff is, is all pretty cool. It fits inside the door, yeah. I mean, they like really- Everything is just so nicely done. The windows. Ugh. Yeah, they're tidy. But we're, we're getting it ready. There's no rules where he's gonna race it. So we're doing, he wanted a little more power. He wanted um, naturally improved chassis dynamics and improved braking. So we're, we're addressing those three categories, braking, chassis, and, and power. He wanted aero too, but I'm, I, I don't know how we can do that in the time frame. So let me get this straight. We're getting to a point where people are flying their cars to you to work on? They're, they come from all over the country and, and now sometimes all over the, the world, um, which is fun. It's a lot of fun for us, you know, because we're not, we're not for everybody, but we are very, very specialized. You know, so we, we have a lot of fun mixing it up. You know, we, we do just about everything. This is our background is racing, but we both, uh, Austin and I both have basically retired <laughs> from racing and we enjoy the dual use, you know, other cars that we're building, but every so often a race car comes through and, you know, it quenches our, our need for, you know, absolutely wringing something out. And then, so a, a lot of what you've learned on this, I'm assuming you probably learned from the Pikes Peak program. This, you know, a lot, of, a lot of what I know, like I started with race cars I, and then eventually got to street cars. Um, and then it was my entire career was only racing. And then again, a little bit of both. So it's just, you know, once you work on Porsche race cars and you see them evolve, you know, to start with the, the 996 Cup and the 996 RSR and then the 997 RSR, um, and now the 935 and the GT2 and the GT3R, all those, you, you see them to continue to evolve and you see how Porsche's 
engineers, how their minds work. You know, so it, it all makes sense. You know, I might not know everything or every way through, but as you dig further into the car, it just makes sense. So it's, it's rather easy to work with. I really like the fact that this is being used. Yeah. Most of these, especially the 935s, I feel like don't get raced. Correct. I mean, that was what was cool about Jeff running the 935 at Pikes Peak. No one was racing them. Definitely not on a, in a manner that is internationally viewed. You know, so that was, that was really cool. And, and same with this. Yeah, I mean, when he um, contacted me about buying it, you know, I, it, was, it was really exciting to hear what he wanted to do and, and try to go compete, um, you know, in South America with, he thinks it can beat up on, on some of the, the big boy GT3 cars. You know, so that's what our goal is here. That is so cool. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, this is, that's been going on for a little while. You know, we had to... Pause on it, you know, during the Pikes Peak stuff, but we're back to it. This is a, a GT3, a 991 GT3 rally car that we're building. Um, not so much Safari style. He doesn't want external bumpers, but we did do an integrated um, uh, roll cage on it. We'll have a very, very Spartan interior. He wants it more, as light as possible. So we took out the air conditioning. We took out the stereo, all the speakers and all that stuff. And... He didn't want the wing, so we're putting on a, a GT3 Touring wing, um, full our long travel um, suspension on this, where we actually got rid of the GT3 uprights and subframes because those are designed to be operated at a, a low ride height. So it actually hurts us when we're trying to achieve more suspension travel and ride height. So you worked, you, you were working on this as well as the Turbo Safari build way before Porsche even announced that they came yeah. out with that 959 Safari yeah, the Dakar. inspiration, the yeah. Dakar. Yeah. yeah. So we, yeah, we, started, we started this um, four years ago, so long before, which actually when they announced it, I was like, damn it, they're beating me to the gun. But all it did was bring more attention to this because, you know, we have, a, we have an 18-inch wheel with a 29-inch tire, you know, so we have proper sidewall. You know, we have a uh, motorsport suspension you know, and, and full undercarriage protection. So that's, that the Dakar does not have those things. So we're having fun and, and developing even further, like we're developing our own uh, flare because everyone knows the, the cup flares, we've, they're on the turbo, but we're doing it as an arrow piece, kind of like, like the GT2 Evo there. So this one it's done will be vented, you know, to the fender and we'll have this buttress style wing that connects to the rocker. So it's a, that's the first 3D printed prototype of what we're, we're trying to accomplish. I can't believe you're going to be able to fit these tires on. <laughs> so did this start with this? Like, were you thinking, okay, it needs to have this tire, this size with these wheels, and then you're gonna shape everything else around it? Basically, yeah, I, was, I, I went through what tires were available, um, you know, and sizes and what was gonna work. So it was a lot of back and forth, and this is what we came up with that was the biggest um, within reason. Um, this obviously, you can see, is not gonna clear, but we're also not attached yet. It's just, it, we put it on for the show. So we're still working on the front skid plate and mounting there, but this actually does. We, with the flares on and no spring in the shock, I did you know, go full compression uh, while steering and, and straight forward. So this, this is gonna tuck up behind the, the fender. There's so much crazy stuff going on here. So you even made a custom headlight for, is that for clearance? Yeah, because the, the, the headlight is pretty deep. So at full compression, the wheel was going to hit the headlight and poke it out. So we, we developed a headlight bucket with a headlight lens and two projectors that, you know, once the wires aren't there, kind of looks original. And that, that lens is from the GT3R. So we kind of took a, a, a page from Porsche's book. This is our GT3R hood conversion that you know, it was for aero, but even with the race cars, the purpose is to get the radiators off the nose. So you can, in the event of impact, you're not knocking a radiator off, which back in my 996 RSR days, the nose was so fragile. So if you poked somebody, your race was typically over. So if for a rally car, stuffing it in a ditch, we don't want the radiator. So then the radiator is moved all the way back here. It's in the, in the front. Oh. And then the, the, the impact strip is still protecting it. So then there's not gonna be a frunk anymore. There's not gonna be a frunk, just, mm -hmm. like, just like the Safari over there too. So we, we repurposed the, the area there that was for the side radiator. We put a big uh, Baja Designs LP6 there, 
And then you know, everyone thinks of hood light pods when they think rally cars. I don't like that because it's just overused. And this is too nice of a hood to, you know, to burden with a hood light pod. So we, we did the, the Manti style endurance lights um, behind the bumper skin. And then I'm assuming that because this is functional for the air to come here and pull the hot air out. Yeah, that's why there's a little bit of a lip there is to create a negative pressure area. But yeah, everything that is channeled through this center, it, it can only go straight through and up over, over the roof of the car. All the little touches, you, there's even like a Motion logo there, <laughs> your logo in there. So then, is this a modified bumper or is this like... So this is, this is, this is where I have five different cars kind of going at once. This is a, 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 a GT3 Cup bumper. Those are GT3 Cup flares. That's a GT3R hood. We have Carrera uprights and subframes. We have GT4 Club Sport door cards. We have uh, GT2 RS rockers. <laughs> it kind of just keeps going how many different cars. A GT3 touring deck lid and wing. Um, so then this is going to be rear wheel drive this versus is gonna be, the, the turbo being all. Correct. Way. So this will be, this will stay, this has this, uh, the original engine and transmission with a few little tweaks, just like that has a few tweaks. But this will be really fun because like the, the air-cooled Safari cars, you know, when we tested those versus all-wheel drive, they were a bit more fun because you could, you could slide them around at slower speeds and it was easier to rotate. So this will be, this will be a treat to, to drive. Let's quickly touch on the last three cars that you have in here. So that, that's the very historic Jess Wart Yep, that's that. Like street car. So this chassis won and holds the record in the dirt. And then when it went paved, Jeff came to us, as you remember, and we turned it into a turbo cup car. It was one of the first um, and first to be used in, in real competition. But we won Pikes Peak, won the class in 2015 with that car. Um, it since has been retired, and we're, we're updating uh, the electronics and the wire harness on it now. So it's you know just turnkey, easy to operate. Um, for the owner and future owner, because that car will be sold again as well. It's but, uh, crazy to think that was almost 10 years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, and I, I talk, you heard me talking about my pro racing career, and it's like it was yesterday, but it was like, oh my God, I retired from pro racing at the end of 2007. 17 years, I don't know, I don't know, that. I can't believe I'm old enough to uh, <laughs> have done anything 17 years ago, but anything th substantial. That's super cool, because that's actually run up, Goodwood Festival of Speed too, yep. or uh, up the hill. Yep, yep. And, uh, I forget what year that was, but that was finally when it came back to me to to keep tinkering with it. You know, and I, I do have an emotional attachment to that car because that was that was pretty wild. You know, it was first of its kind. Uh, you are working on hover cars now too. Yep, yep. yep. This is uh, we're experts at wheel fitment, as you can Look see. Look at this. <laughs> that is so cool. So this was, this was an RW, RWB done by Nikai during COVID. So it was built over in Japan. Um, came here uh, for us to do all of the suspension, the brakes, the engine, and the transmission. Because the owner wants to actually use this and track this car. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't understand that RWBs. N Nikai started... Um, by using these as track cars. And he runs uh, a 12 hour race every single year and he invites people over to, to drive these cars. Um, the show aspect of it is cool, but it's mostly about performance. Yeah, I think that that was where it came from and that's what it was intended for. Unfortunately, so many were built that were just the look. Mm. You know, and in this case, you know, it has the look it's pretty wild. What you don't realize is that that rear flare, the width of this car is actually wider than our GT3R. Ooh. I, I got stuck like trying to pick this up in my enclosed trailer and couldn't get it in. <laughs> That's why you had it. <laughs> well, it's a, the wheels are, cause we, the wheels won't, the wheels that this car had won't fit on, uh, over these brakes. Mm. So we're having wheels made. And in the interim we're running, those are Cayenne space saver spares, but with a, uh, snow tire on it yeah. instead of the uh, collapsible spare. So they're my rollers. <laughs> That's some serious brakes for our RWB though. Yeah, six piston front, four piston rear. We did uh, short gear ratios, um, two, three, four, five. 
So first and, and six are, are the same. And we built a 400 horsepower four liter for it. So that actually is coming back to us today. We'll mock it up in the car and we'll start, we'll start building the, uh, the exhaust system for it. So still air-cooled. Correct. What is that from? It's, it's the original motor and then just completely gone through and changing the, the bore to four liter. And it starts life as a 3.6? 3.6, yeah. Wow. 3.6 Vario RAM, that, I think. That's a lot. Of, that's quite a bit in terms of displacement. Yeah, yeah. So what that 3.6 was, I, I, it's probably 300 horsepower or something like that. And now we'll be at 400. Uh, and with close ratios, it's going to be a, a, little, a little rocket or a big rocket, fat rocket. Very wide, <laughs> very wide rocket. It's a cannonball. Uh, <laughs> Last car, uh, 996 GT3. Um, this belongs to a mutual friend of ours, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a 996 GT3 Cup, retired from racing, obviously a long time ago. But uh, you know, people continue to use these for, for club racing or, or track days. So he acquired it, and, and we're going through. He painted the interior himself. I think you probably saw that, which mm -hmm. is cool. So he, he's, he's tasked with putting the rest of the dashboard and everything back together. Um, <laughs> that's not on us. But we redid the suspension, um, different dampers, KW Competition three ways from the RSR, but you know, sprung the way we want it and, and adding as much droop travel as possible so that he can actually clear driveways and uh, potholes and whatnot. But, but mechanically, we're going through everything. So sorted out the engine, you see a new expansion tank in there, kind of like I did with your car and fuel mm. pump, or sorry, fuel filter. Um, new rubber hoses, we welded the water fittings on the engine, fixed up some oil leaks. We put fans on the radiators because these cars don't have fans on the radiators. This is the car that's probably the closest to um, the street car version. Oh yeah, these were really close back in the day. Um, you know, they even had rubber, rubber bushings in the control arm still. You know, so we've, we're upgrading some of that because they're worn out, but you don't, you don't want rubber in these, these cars. Uh, the engine, or sorry, the transmission is still an H pattern. You know, um, it's a little, it's the street engine, but a little more angry. Um, you know, and the transmission, like I said, is H pattern, but it'll have, I, I can't remember if they have synchros or not, but they, if they do, they definitely have steel synchros. Mm, I can't wait for this project to be done because um, I think he wants to register it as a streetcar in Japan, which is going to be really, really cool. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. So that's part of the reason we needed to put fans on it. Um, we're putting an easier to drive clutch, you know, and then just make sure everything mechanically is sound because it, it, racing is demanding, but so are streetcars, you know, to have them run the way you want uh, all the time, you know, so it's, uh, it's going to be fun because we're, we're almost done with it. While you love working on other people's cars, you guys actually make a lot of parts yourself yep. for other people to work on their own cars with these parts. Yep, or other shops or however you want to do it. But yeah, we, we felt the need um, to step up the, the suspension, the aftermarket suspension game, um, you know, and develop our own parts. This is just a, a few samples to, to share, but we make every replacement arm for 991, Turbo and Carrera, and, and all GT3 as well. Um, and then we make we have a pro proprietary brake pad compound for street and track, or just track. Um, and then, as you've seen, some of our collab parts with Son of Cobra, that's an underbody strake um, that you see on all the modern cars, but that's a, a carbon replacement part. The question for me always is, why is it that the OEMs don't even make anything like this for it to just come on the car? It, it almost feels like it would be so much easier in terms of longevity, but then you have to remember, these are very expensive to make. Huh? Exactly, so the, their, their goal is to make money, right? So they can't, they can't put the most expensive components on every car, because then it would just be priced out of the market. That and they have a wide demographic. You know, they have people that aren't so performance minded. You know, so rubber bushings will be quieter, it'll be a little lazier, you know, so that's fine for, for most people. So when you want to get rid of rubber bushings and go to spherical bearings, you know, so you get rid of, you know, suspension deflection in the corners, um, you know, that gives, that gives the driver more confidence. 
it's, it's better uh, performance because you're not getting geomet unnecessary geometry changes that affect tire wear and you know, lap times. We make these out of, uh, you know, that's billet aluminum, um, hard anodized, so they won't chip quite as easy. And uh, anti-corrosion treatment on the studs, heat treated studs, uh, stainless uh, bushings so they won't corrode. You know, we just really wanted to, these cars are really beautiful, they're incredible. And we want, there was too many aftermarket options that just left a lot to be desired and kind of took away it was, they were performance oriented, but you had to compromise with suspension noise, rattles, squeaks, you know, and stuff that would wear out prematurely. So we just wanted to have something that was like Porsche Motorsport parts, because that's our background, in some ways better or easier. They're serviceable, which usually they're not. You know, so you, when your bearing does eventually wear out, you can put new bearings in it. Um, but only using adjustability where, where it's absolutely necessary um, like these, these and other, other brands are adjustable, but most shops will get lost in those adjustments. And once you do a, a threaded, you know, a threaded rod end, there's no way of really knowing how long it is or how short it is for making sure it's the same side to side or just to know what, look at it real quick. You can count shims in this one, you know, so you know exactly how, what your shim stack is to know if it matches the other side or how much change you need, you know, so the same same for, we don't have any shims in here right now, but this is a GT3 style adjustment in the rear, but for a Carrera, the, the rear lower control arm fork. You know, this is the front GT3s, that's where the shims would go. Shims are easy, that's how the race cars are. They don't use threaded rod ends. But uh, like I said, these don't need to be adjustable. Only, uh, I mean, it's really rare to have a shop that knows how to correctly adjust a multi-link suspension to where it's bump steered correctly. It's, and it's something I don't even enjoy doing. So it's, we just took that out of it. So we can ship these out and, and help you engineer your car over the phone or over email. And that's, that was really the important thing for us as well. Mm. Tell me a little bit about the meet. Yeah, yeah. that was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, Avant's Magazine Car Club, um, I'm, I've only been a member for about a year. And this is the first time they contacted me to do uh, an open house. And actually, we've, we've never done an open house just because I, I really am always overworked and our schedule's so tight and, you know, that's a lot of effort, you know, and we still spent a lot of effort, but Avant's promoted it and we, um, we opened our doors for, for the public for the first time, which was a lot of fun because we had a fantastic turnout, you know, a lot of really enthusiastic people, you know, asking a lot of the right questions, you know, about, about our product or about our projects, you know, it was, uh, it was cool, it was fun to share. Yeah, it's great because that's also another way to get more customers they can see the quality of the work that you're doing here. Um, and of course, also the fact that you don't just work on race cars and street cars, you also make parts. Right. You know? Yeah, we, we, we kind of, we, we fill in that gray area from street car to race car or a purpose-built car of any type, like the Safaris or Cayennes, mm -hmm. you know, and it, but for us with endurance racing as our background, it has to be functional and it has to be reliable uh, more than anything. You know, the performance is great, but you have to have it reliable. And um, again, the dual use is big for us where, you know, you can build a track car, but then it's like, ah, oh, man, but I lost a really cool street car. You know, so if you can build a, a competitive street car, you know, so you get to use it on track and on street is what's fun. Or a daily driver Cayenne, you know, or a daily driver Safari. I don't want to, I don't want to limit what people can use their car for. So, yeah, it was awesome. a lot of fun to have everyone here. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for giving us a life update. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.